Hey, hey, everybody. Hope you all are doing fantastical. And as always, thanks for checking out this video. Uh, this is kind of a long one, guys. I <laughs> I tried to trim the fat. I think I <clears throat> set out to uh, film the entire game. But uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to talk about some advanced techniques for beginners. Now, this isn't solely for the beginner. Um, I'm going to show you a way to utilize that mid-range small circle services 23 plants um, need spell and how to do it in your dorm. Now, I know that this sort of violates my rule of, you know, stay out of the areas that you're gardening in. But when you're um, a lower level, you know, I would say up until um, you're out of Zafaria, you're going to level enough times that it's going to, you know, completely replenish your energy. And if you do have to port back in um, and you do suffer some needs creep, it's not really that big of a deal because these are fairly uh, small plots. So these are going to be 23 um, plant plot stacks and you can do them in small, medium and large. There are some differences. Um, the medium and large are going to pretty much function the same. It's the small that's going to have one minor variation. Now the, these uh, soils are arranged with um, in a three by four pattern. So the bottom plot will be three by four. And then you're going to come up four clicks with the rug and do the second tier. And that'll be three by four with one missing. So 11 for a grand total of 23. And these can be serviced with that uh, mid-range uh, small circle spell that you get from Crocotopia. So in this episode, well, obviously we're going to talk about dorm room gardening. We're going to talk about some considerations and decisions, you know, crowns, not crowns, so on and so forth. Um, there are some variations. Keeping in mind that um, I'm not saying this is the best way or the only way, it is just a way. And please feel free to take any pieces and parts from this and modify it as you see fit. Um, I'm going to show you how to do the mini stack plots. And I'm sort of going to take you through some video that um, I'll try to eliminate redundancy where where it exists but uh, you know I want to make it as uh, full as possible so generally you're faced with some early game issues um, gold it's always an issue early game uh, you know you're a newly minted gardener at level 12 gardening can help offset that because there's really not many decent places to farm for gold in Wizard City or Crocotopia or, or even Marleybone, I think. The the dropped, or what I call ground gear, the stuff that drops that's, eh, ten, you know, not really the best stuff. You can hawk that in the bazaar um, for gold, as most of you probably know. That gear doesn't really become a little more uh, rewarding until you get to Dragon Spire, at least in my opinion. Um, so gardening can help offset that, but it is sort of a catch-22. You're going to need some gold up front to buy some seeds. Um, space is an issue. We're going to eliminate that issue here. Now you can do this in any other house. So if you are new to the game and someone bought you a, a bundle gift card or whatever, and you have a house, you can do this in that house. It doesn't have to be done in the dorm room. And certainly you can port this out to the Red Barn Farm once you get to the point where you can afford one. You can also do this in the Red Barn Farm and, um, you know, it works pretty well there um, as well. So keep that in mind. Um, crowns, you know, there are some decision points in this video. Should you spend them? Should you not? It's entirely up to you. It will, you know, modify and impact the, the outcome. So, you know, something to keep in mind, I did purchase uh, a crown seed and I did purchase a bric-a-brac to expand the dorm room from 50 um, items to 100 items. So, you know, if you don't want to do that to the dorm room, I get it. You know, it's 995 crowns. It's a little steep for the dorm for space that you may not, you know, you may not use it in later in game, you know, to that extent. However, um, 
it will kind of set you up to go a little faster and a little further early game and it'll you know put you in a better position in terms of gold and gardening rank so a couple things to consider in the beginning you want to monoculture each bed so stick with a single seed type per bed try not to um, you know put different seeds or disparate seeds together stick with the same type now you can have an adjacent bed with different seeds in it that's fine I, I think if you put a bunch of different seeds together you, you run some risks of um, you know overblowing or overshooting your energy and you certainly don't want to do that because you don't want to be buying potions or having to uh, you know wreck wreck the garden so to speak by uh, plowing it um, <clears throat> here's some fairly general milestones you know, at level 12 you can um, take the gardening quest and I recommend you do it at level 12 um, because you're trying to get to a certain point in the game the red barn farm is kind of the gold driven milestone and your ability to reach that goal is going to vary from character to character uh, person to person game to game that experience will be different but that is sort of a key milestone. That Red Barn Farm, I think, is probably one of the more important purchases that you'll make that's, you know, garden-centric. But, you know, at level 12, take the, you know, go and do the quest. It's uh, given by Moolinda. The minute you hit level 12, a uh, bubble will pop up on the right-hand side of your screen where she's inviting you to come see her. Go do that. Take the entire quest. You'll get a couple of free garden spells or a few free garden spells out of it. And then you'll have access to the rank one spells and the rank two spell initially. Your rank three spells, which we're primarily going to be using in this video, those uh, will be available in Crocotopia, um, which you'll already be in Crocotopia when you get the quest. So you'll have access to, um, to the mole that sells those spells in Crocotopia. Um, so yeah, these are sort of the, just the, the base milestones in terms of gardening. So your rank one spells, um, except for the pest spell, which you only get one, these are all independently targeted, what I call single service. So they're point and click. So warming rays, mist, worker bee, um, touch of magic, they, um, you have to point these individually at the plant. Um, they all cost 100 gold. You will get plow and revive for free. And in addition, you're going to get the small soil and the medium soil for free, which is what we're going to be utilizing here primarily. Um, now, the bug bowl is a large circle spell, and that means it can service up to 69 plants. So you'll be able to leverage that if you decide to go with um, with the two bed arrangement. If you don't do the bric-a-brac and you don't want to spend the crowns, you'll either have to stick with one stack bed or you can actually just build the bottom tier in both seed sizes, so the small and medium, and you can go with it that way. That works as well. Uh, finally, also Farley, um, who is the, the, the quest master for uh, the first gardening quest. He also sells the um, level two pest spell. And you want to get that too as soon as you can get to it. Um, it's necessary, I think, to, uh, to move up in terms of seed type and seed reward. So all total for all those spells, you're going to be out 1,600 gold. Just something to consider. Okay, so where to plant? Um, you're a newly minted gardener. You're level 12 and you port back to your dorm. You got a couple of free seeds from the quest. You got a dandelion and a boom shroom. Now, the boom shroom is a good consideration. Um, the dandelion, not so much. Now, listen, if you're a little paranoid and you're just brand new to this and you want to use those pots... Um, just to get a feel for how the, the whole thing functions, you know, feel free to do that and then take the plunge into this after you've uh, run full cycle 
on that free dandelion and free boom shroom. Now it likely won't level you, um, but maybe it will. You know, it's going to depend. So what to plant first? Um, the dandelion, I don't think it's a good consideration only because it only gives 20 XP at Elder. But, you know, it does drop some reagents. The gold's not bad. Um, but all in all, I, I think as a first plant, I wouldn't recommend this. The Boom Shroom is a better option, and, and these are both small, um, small plot seeds. So keep that in mind. You will need small plots for these. Uh, the Boom Shroom is a better option. It's also dropping some reagents, some TC, and the gold's pretty decent. But kind of the main theme is that it's going to give you 50 XP once it elders. Honeysickle is also um, a good option. A little more expensive. But um, I, I think for the gold, it's a better option. So while you're spending 1440 around that, depending upon how many of them are in the bazaar, um, and you're going to get all these at the bazaar, by the way. You know, this is going to give you 50 XP at Elder, and I think the gold yield justifies the price personally. Now, as you'll see, you don't really need to start off with a bunch of these. All you really need is five seeds that are going to yield you 50 XP at Elder to um, to level up to uh, level two or three rather quickly. Um, the Disparagus, I wouldn't do. I just don't like it. Um, one, I think it's hideous. <laughs> and I'm no, kidding. No, um, it's just, you know, it's 20 XP. I just don't think it's worthwhile. The gold is, it's okay, but, you know. Um, it's better than nothing, I will say that, but I think the experience that you're getting, um, you know, you might as well go with something a little uh, more rewarding in the end. And then there is the Tiger Lily. That's also a good choice. 50 XP at Elder. Uh, the Yellow Bell Pepper is not a bad choice. And, you know, the Sour Fickle Pickle, you will be able to buy that at rank one. <clears throat> The problem with it is it does require the rank two pest spell gusty winds. So hold off on these until you get that spell. Now I think these are really the best way to go. <clears throat> Assuming they're available in the bazaar, they're not always there. Um, you don't need to start off with 23 of these, but they do drop some really decent TC um, at Elder. And the gold reward is really, really high. Um, you're also getting 200 XP at mature, so you can harvest this thing, you know, three or four times before uh, it hits elder. And this is going to level you super fast, plus it reseeds. So at elder, every time you harvest it, you're going to get your seed back. Um, so you can either replant it or, you know, if you're done with these, um, you know, go ahead and go back to the bazaar and sell it. You'll get some of your initial uh, gold investment back. So, getting ready to plant, um, so getting ready to actually put, to build these uh, stack plots, or plot stacks, you want to go see Albert Quickhammer, and I know, I'm constantly uh, selling these rugs, I think I should uh, start a rug store. Um, you're going to want two of these, uh, and there's a reason for it, buy the small lunar rug for 250 gold, you need one of those. And then you're going to need a small blue trim rug. Um, this will cover the small soil. The small lunar rug will cover the large and medium. So here's what the uh, stack looks like. This is the medium stack. The large stack looks pretty much the same. And it's going to function exactly the same. And you're going to use that uh, small lunar rug to do both of those uh, soil sizes. Uh, in the beginning, though, hold off on the, the large soil because you won't uh, be able to buy any seeds or use any seeds um, at rank one that, that require the large soil. So, as you can see, the bottom tier is three by four. And these are separated using advanced move by four clicks. And then what you're going to do once you've done those 12 on the bottom is you're going to move the rug up four clicks. 
and then start the top tier. So they're separated by four clicks. And then on that top tier, um, it's also three by four, but you're gonna leave one off um, on any side you want. And you can even leave one off on the bottom if you, if you feel that's a little more aesthetic, it doesn't matter. As long as it's uh, 23 total, you're good to go. Um, in case you don't know, or you've never done it, I thought I would throw this in. Um, this is advanced move. It's pretty simple. You're going to set down an object, in this case, the small lunar rug, click it. And then once you do, you want to click that advanced move button. Then this is going to pop up left, right, forward, backwards, up, down. You want to switch that using that icon, switch between relative and absolute. And then you want to pull that sensitivity bar all the way to the bottom. And then you want to accept it. And once you do that, that is locked in. And then at that point, you can cast a soil onto that rug. Now you can't natively put a soil in the dorm room. So you're going to need this rug. Um, in addition, if you find out you if you find yourself having moved in the wrong direction or you've lost your count. Uh, just click this reset button and that'll put the rug back where it belongs so it's four clicks accept and then cast a soil and you're going to do that um, over and over again as you'll see and that will um, facilitate you being able to build the bed and actually compact the soils enough to um, to fit them within a small within the small circle spell Okay, so here's the medium soil stack. I'm going to show you the, this entire thing, and then I'll just uh, start the beginning of the large. And then we'll move on to the small soil stack, which has one variation. And as you can see, it's it's four clicks. One, two, three, four. Accept, and then cast a soil bed onto the rug. In addition, this is sort of a shortcut. You can take your favorites bar and select the soil that you want by right clicking, and then fill in the rest of it with um, nine spells that you're not gonna use. And then what it'll do is, as you can see, it puts it right there sort of mid-screen. So when you're bouncing back and forth, it makes it a little more accessible than swinging the mouse all the way over uh, to the left.
Okay, this finishes the bottom tier. So now you're going to move this rug up four clicks. Not down like I did here. Move it up four clicks. And then you're going to start the top tier. Okay, and that's essentially the conclusion of the build. The large soil is going to build exactly the same way. And as you'll see, it's 23 plots. So at this point, you can pick up the rug and you're ready to go. The large soil um, is exactly the same. I'm not going to show this entire thing, though. Um, but I'll just show you the first bit of it. It's pretty uh, straightforward. It's the exact same thing, the exact same amount of clicks and configuration. So it's three by four for 12. And you want to come up four clicks and all of the plots are spaced by four clicks. And then on the top, you want to do 11. Uh, in other words, do the three by four, but leave one off on the end.
So it's one, two, three, four. I, I think you get the picture. So the small stack, small soil stack, there's one variation on this. Um, it's the same configuration, three by four um, on the bottom and three by four on the top. And they are spaced by four clicks. So um, going, going up to build the top tier, you're gonna wanna move the rug four spaces. However, the plots are gonna be spaced by five clicks instead of four. If you, you can do four, but the problem with doing four is you won't be able to plant individually into each and every uh, plot. Now, even with the five clicks, these smalls will fit nicely inside of a small uh, service ring for needs. And as you can see, that was five clicks. So all of the soils are gonna be separated by five clicks. Now, if you need a breakout on this, put let me know in the comments and I can um, do just one video with just this, the full breakout of how this is built. So whichever soil size you wanna see a single video on, I can do that. Um, these are just, you know, lengthwise, they're pretty long and extremely redundant. And hopefully, I think at this point, you get it. But if you don't, that's fine. Um, leave a message in the comments and I can, uh, can upload these individually. So that's the small soil. So planting and adding likes just like you would anywhere else. Um, you're going to have to plant these one by one in the beginning, um, since you don't have plant all, which is fine. And I think even if you do run across some plant all TC, um, don't waste it on this. These are 23 seeds, so they go pretty fast. And, you know, sort of the cool thing about it is it's not going to burn you out. You know, if you do a 69 plot bed and you don't have plant all, it takes a while and it gets a little tedious. Um, you know to keep repeating that process, but with 23 seeds, it's pretty fast and Chances are that if you do the small and medium like you see here um, You're gonna be using different seeds and they're gonna mature differently Now again, you're gonna need the bric-a-brac to do both of these um, stacks in your dorm room, so you'll need to expand the dorm room to a hundred items And in this scenario, we've planted honeysickle and we've also planted uh, tiger lilies into the small soil. And I will leave in the um, description the link to the Wizard 101 Wiki Seeds landing page. Be sure to check that, you know, if you're kind of new to this, get familiar with that. It's going to not only tell you um, what the likes are and the modifiers, but it will also give you a good idea of the energy usage, which is another thing you should calculate for, and the spells. So you'll see if you go to that page, it talks about minimum and maximum requirements. Always go with the maximum, because if it says uses bug bolt and or gusty winds, you're going to need gusty winds to do it. It's just that simple. So keep that in mind. Um, I'll put it in the description and uh, hopefully you get familiar with that and you're able to, uh, to make some use of that page. It's about 98% accurate. Okay, conversely in the beginning, so this is a rank one novice gardener. You don't have to build the entire stack. Um, 
up front. So if you're just going to do one stack, or if you're going to do both, you know, you can do that eventually. Um, start off with five seeds. It can be small or medium, but start off with five seeds that are going to yield you 50 experience points. Um, and that will level you up to the rank two, rank three range where you can do two things. You can get that gusty winds and you can also go into Crocotopia and get the, um, the small circumference ring spell that services 23 plants so that you can pull the rest of this off. Um, if you're going to do it this way, just leave the rug there. Now, once you plant onto that, you won't be able to move that rug out. But it doesn't matter because the rug is in the right position to pick this up once, um, you know, once we've harvested these at Elder. And then we can just pick right back up where we started. You'll just have to highlight the rug and, you know, switch the absolute and relative and sensitivity configurations and keep on going. So this will give you an idea of like how quickly you level. Um, in the beginning, you're just going to be stuck with the independently targeted spells. And that's, you know, that's fine. You're just going to have to deal with that, which is why we're only doing five. I think it's a little more manageable than trying to do the whole stack. It would take a while to sit here and, um, you know, cast this spell onto each and every plant or two spells in this case. I've never gotten that dialogue box before. I guess I mistakenly cast it on the wrong plant. It didn't need anything. Okay, this is just going to sort of run you through this character, showing you how quickly this character will level. And this is the full service cycle. And I apologize, I, I should have cut this out, but anyway, we're going to take a little trip to the bazaar since we don't have a tapestry and we're going to pick up some likes and the reason is we want to speed this process up now we're not going to do the plant likes in the beginning um, only the object likes and in this case um, we need a weapons rack and we're going to get us a Garden Gnome, and the Garden Gnome is fairly universal, the Tropical Garden Gnome. And if there isn't one in the Bazaar, you can get a Tropical Garden Gnome from Farley, who's the Garden Mole that gives you the, or that takes you through the first gardening quest. And he's in Golem Court, so he's pretty easy to find. And you can float these likes, which I recommend doing. Um, you can also sync likes below. Um, the only problem is then you forget they're there and you forget to pick them up.
and you'll see here in a second how quickly these five plans will rank you up. So I'm ranked two. And I'm going to go ahead and get that Gusty Winds. Then the next day, these are Elder. And we're now ranked three. So as you can see, you only need you know, five plants that yield 50 to start this out. And then we're going to go back to that rug and we're going to finish off this, um, this build of this, uh, stack. Then we're going to head to, um, see Charlie. And we're going to train up all of the spells that he offers at rank three and these are the small circle small ring um, services 23 plant spells that we're going to use so this is what uh, Charlie's got on offer they're a bit more expensive but if you've been a little uh, miserly with your gold you should be good to go um, these are essentially a doppelganger or a duplicate of the, the rank one spells, but instead of being independently targetable, they provide a ring um, that you're going to put around the plants and it will service up to 23 plants. None of these are free, by the way, and this is also where you pick up your large soil. Um, and then eventually you'll be able to get the, uh, the deep freeze as well. Now, you probably won't use that until later on. Um, it is the rank three pest spell. But go ahead and pick it up because you're going to need it. And then that way you've got all the spells from both of these um, initial moles. You can also get the enchanted small soil there for 1,000 gold. Um, at some point you may want to use that. It, it's, it's a rank four spell, but it's not really necessary in the beginning. So here's where I sort of uh, decided to go, you know, these are some of the crown point decisions, the brick brack. Um, you know, it's 995 crowns. It's a little steep for this particular area. But, you know, if you got the crowns and you want to do it, fine. If you don't, like I said, you can split these stacks or just stay with one stack. So when you go to service them, it's going to look a little like this. Um, when you do place the likes, uh, put the mole on the ground right about there. And this is the reason that we have these so close together. Because we can service these now with a single um, large circumference pest spell, the gusty winds. And as you can see, this character leveled up pretty quickly. This is literally like two iterations. And it's, he's, you know, this character's rank 10 in gardening. And this character doesn't even have the large circumference spells yet. So as you can see, this, you know, this is going to level you up extremely quickly. Now you'll notice I did put some plant likes in. Um... You don't have to do that. It does sort of um, provide a few other things that you need to take care of. The honeysickle, if you do that, it's going to mature pretty quickly. In addition, I did buy one um, key lime throughout this process. The key limes will level you up extremely quickly. And they drop like shop keys, which you can sell in the bazaar for gold. So you can leverage those, uh, you know, quite readily for that. 
shop keys you're not going to need those for crafting until late game and then you'll always have the key limes you know you can run them up to a certain uh, quantity because they do drop themselves which um you know which allows you to just keep building up an inventory of them so one seed it's going to take you a bit but uh, eventually you'll have a large bed of those and you know you'll be well on your way to hitting level 15 which is sort of another milestone and that's the milestone of which you know you'll probably be in avalon and you can do the um, roger the shrubber quest in order to get plant all which you know frankly sort of makes you lethal in the uh, the gardening sense and as you can see these uh these sour fickle pickles are providing, you know, quite a bit of gold, um, decent experience, and um, a few treasure cards, and then some snacks that are like mid-range that you could use during the uh, double snack event or double uh, pet um, XP event. So, you know, it's kind of hard to train a pet early on, but, uh, you know, these can be used for that. Or you can sell them for gold. There is that option. Um, they will net you quite a bit more gold, plus the treasure cards that you wouldn't use. Sell all that in the bazaar. So, um, you know, at some point you're going to have enough gold. This is sort of the goal or objective is to go ahead and um, spend the 125, I'm sorry, yeah, 125,000 gold. Don't buy this thing for crowns. Um, I don't know, I kind of think it's a waste if you can get it for gold. But at some point, you're going to want to buy a red barn farm. And in the next volume, we'll talk about how to move out of that dorm and how to move into the red barn farm and how to sort of leverage and manage that um, and which seeds to go you know, seek out and how that works out. So that'll be sort of level, you know, or volume two, rather. So that's it, y'all. Thanks for checking this out. Um... As always, you know, subscribe, like, whatever works for you. Um, I hope you all are doing great and um, enjoy.